Hi gents. Hopefully, today I will show you something you haven't seen before. Actually, I want to do a different video. What I wanted uh, is to show you the right way of using your laboratory glassware. It's a problem we have when it comes to glassware, 90% of videos on YouTube are absolutely wrong. Even quite a lot of professional chemists using it in the wrong way. But who am I to argue with the rest of the world? I'm just a random guy with funny accent uh, making his videos somewhere in the garage while using a rusty kitchen pot. Pretty much I just had no chance to prove anything. And uh, one day I came up with the idea. If I want to prove my knowledge about glassware, I have to show you something nobody ever done before. I mean, never ever. So here we are. I will try to make a heat resistant beaker from an ordinary glass jar. And to prove my point, I will boil water on a normal kitchen hot plate. Do you still think I stand no chance? Just watch and learn. For now we do some voodoo magic. Take any vessel, well in my case it's the same rusty kitchen pot, something I used in my other videos, and fill it in with cold water. Wrap a glass jar into any fabric or even a kitchen rag, and boil the jar on slow heat for about 2 hours or so. I will skip it in the video, because there's nothing special. Rag is needed only for one purpose, to dispense the heat evenly. Now this important part. When you finish boiling, cover your pot with kitchen towels, so it will be cooling down not rapidly, but as slowly as possible. Right. For now we made the glass jar just a little bit more fit for purpose, but it's still not good enough. Actually, glass is not afraid of heat itself, but it will break when heat is applied unevenly, or if it experiences so named thermal shock. To dispense the heat evenly, we wrap it in a foil. To dispense the heat even more evenly, on top of it you can put any kind of thermal insulator. Myself, I used exhaust wrap I found in garage, and I fixed everything using a duct tape. Okay, it's time to make a tea, or maybe coffee, or maybe on hot chocolate, whatever I like more. So there is one thing, do not put your hot plate on full power, but do it very gradually. Now I'm checking the temperature using a meat thermometer. Looks a bit weird, but as far as it does the job, there is nothing wrong with it. Now it's about 90 degrees Celsius, and we're missing just 10 degrees from water boiling temperature. As you can see, power switch is the number 5, which is the maximum you can get. And now, water is boiling. I do not recommend using this method for boiling anything corrosive, but I hope I prove my points that it can be done. Hopefully, if I have a time, I will also make a video how to properly use a glassware and how to get most out of it. If you like my video, Feel free to rate and to comment it, and thanks for watching.